So uh, tell us where Yenesis Cabrera fits into your plans right now. Um, you know, another left-handed arm that has big stuff, obviously. Um, you know, we've seen him over the course of his career, whether it was minor leagues or big leagues, you know, kind of familiar with him. Um, he's going to meet us sometime on the road, not quite sure, still figuring that out as we speak. But it's a, uh, a left-handed option, which I think, you know, eases a little bit of a, of a load off of Timmy Meza and even Trevor Richards and Eric Swanson a little bit, who we use in, you know, kind of similar uh, situations based on lineup. So um, really excited about the stuff, really excited about the strikeout capability um, that he does have, especially against left-handed hitters. Uh, we're going to be facing a ton of those coming up between Baltimore, Boston, um, just to mention a few. So uh, excited to kind of get him in and, um, you know, get him settled and and um, looking forward to him helping us. John, John how is trust? You know, this time of the year, you're trying to win baseball games. It's all it's about. It's about winning. And you trying to find a pocket for a new pitcher to come in who hasn't had the greatest of years, right? He's walking some batters in, in you know, per nine innings. He's given up some hits, right? But the lefties, he's basically dominating. Those are hitting somewhere around 200. How do you, how do you gain trust as a manager with that guy? Is it, you don't use him after a certain inning? Is it right? You you're mixing him in, say fifth inning, two outs, lefty coming up bottom of the order. Let's see if he gets that out. If he gets that out and then we'll move on to the next one. Is that sort of how it is? Yeah. I mean, I think first and foremost, you feel comfortable with the guys that we do have here and what they've done over the course of this year. And then when you, when you have an addition, you know, you want to try to put him in spots to have success. That's the, that's the goal with any player, but especially I think any, any arm coming out of the bullpen. So uh, with each outing, I think, you know, you, you evaluate it, you see how he responds in each situ uh, situation in a perfect world, you kind of get him in and lower leverage and, and work your way up. But it's, um, it's an exciting, it's an exciting ad for sure. And, um, you know, hopefully he can kind of just fit right in. And, um, you know, I think that it's, it's going to be really key to just try to get him, you know, initially, you know, for sure in spots that, you know, we think he's going to have a lot of success. Every time you're on, I, I'll, I always have to ask a Vladdy question. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, look, the, whenever you see him take 99 with some sank from a righty mm -hmm. and have a two handed finish and hit a line drive home run to right field, that's elite stuff. That's what you talk about all the time about getting a pitch that he can do damage on. But John, I got to be honest with you. Then you watch the game before with you say Kikuchi. Now you or uh, you Darvis. I apologize. He was sort of throwing the two seamer in early in counts, and that's sort of been his little kryptonite all season. Is early in counts, runners on base. I sort of get myself out. How do you find that balance? Like the the in between, Vladdy. Right is. If he can take that one, get a little deeper in account, give a guy a chance to maybe hang one thigh high middle of the way so he can do sort of what he did hitting the home run to right field. Yeah, I mean, for one, really impressive swing yesterday to do what he did with, like you said, uh, a sinking fastball 99. With Vladdy, it's interesting. You know, it's, yeah, it's 99 and it's sinking, and it's just about where that pitch started. That pitch started middle of the way and kind of ran back to the middle, and I think – you know, when he's swinging at pitches in that area, as opposed to ones that are starting middle and running in, um, he hits the ball so damn hard, he's going to do damage, you know? So these are things that, you know, G, Hudgy, Hunter, they talk with Vladdy about, and all of our guys about all the time. And, um, you know, Vladdy, I think he's so talented. He's, you know, it, as, as he goes forward, if he's just focusing on getting the balls in the middle of the plate, he's going to have huge numbers and have a lot of success. So, the in-between stuff, it, it is weird. There's, I mean, we ran into some good pitching with San Diego. That's, sure. that's a pretty mm -hmm. good stat. Yeah. And between Musgrove, Darvish, and Snell. And then you get guys that are, you know, I think a part of it, too, is understanding how you're going to be attacked, right? And, and especially in certain situations. So not being afraid to be, you know, 1-1, one, one, um, even 1-2. One, you know what I mean? You don't want to be sitting 1-2. But no matter who's on the mound, you know, I think, you know, with the exception of a handful of guys, the more and more you work them, the more and more prone they are to make mistakes. So if you can stay convicted with that approach and just really have the understanding of how they're going to try to attack you um, and kind of shrink that zone a little bit, Vladdy's as dangerous as anybody in the league. Uh, John, you say Kikuchi starting tonight. What will be the key for him in terms of managing and maintaining an efficient pitch count? Because it seems to me that that's, you know, that's one of the, well, let's face it. I mean, the more pitches you throw, the chances are you're going to be taken out of a game earlier. 
What does he have to do to maintain, uh, establish and maintain an efficient pitch count? I hope what he can build off of his last batting, he kind of he kind of adjusted um, after a couple innings was just um, locating his slider a little bit. I think you know his last outing too, the curveball and the changeup were a little bit hit and miss. Um, but for him to be efficient, you know, I think you know when you're in the zone, um, usually good things happen. Sometimes bad things happen when you talk about damage being done with home runs and extra base hits, but. With his stuff, when he's in the zone, you know, he has a pretty good chance to get guys out. Um, We totally understand that with that comes some risk with, you know, with damage and things like that. But um, if he's getting, you know, two of his pitches in the zone really consistently, he's he's been damn good this year. And if he can do that and arrive, you know, at a certain point in the game with an efficient pitch count, you know, I think that's what drives the length of the outing. Um, And it is it is very unique how teams you know, stack righties against him. And then you look at what options we do have in the bullpen in certain situations and you try to make some incremental gains in terms of matchup too. But um, it all comes down to, you know, at least two pitches in the zone consistently and then getting quick outs with that, um, you know, at the start of the game. So he's in a good spot, you know, come the fifth, sixth, seventh inning. On Saturday with Gosman health wise, you're confident enough. There's nothing you're looking for, like, you know, landing spots, rotation, velocity, break, like there's none of that. He's healthy and you're just going to enjoy the show basically. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I watched his side on Wednesday. He was letting it eat. You know, it was a, it was a, a, a fairly good workload in, in terms of number of pitches and um, looked like Kevin Gosman. So we got no restrictions with him tomorrow. Um, I know we had a really good outing against these guys last time and um, excited to get him back on the mound every, every fifth day. John, did you see anything from Alejandro Kirk yesterday that, uh, was markedly different from what we've seen before. And, you know, Kevin and I had this discussion. That was a good, that was a good day to say the least, a good day at the plate for him offensively. Do guys, do guys build off good days or is it still, you know, next day we got a different starting pitcher and you kind of got to do it all over again. A little bit of both, but I think with Kirky in particular, you know, things that he's been working on kind of behind the scenes, it's, um, you know, I think yesterday's game in a nutshell with the walk, couple of knocks and a homer that's what he can do on a consistent basis and with him you know i think trying to do probably this sounds so easy to to say or to fix but trying to do a little bit too much trying to hit the ball harder than what he really does need to hit it you know sometimes your your mechanics can get thrown out of whack a little bit and that happens to a lot of hitters and even really good hitters you know you see it around the league all the time so i think yesterday's game in a nutshell was just approach wise you know, the best we've seen in a while results wise, obviously too, but you know, these are things that he's constantly working on. And I think that, you know, over the course of a year, there's going to be ups and downs, our expectation of him, you know, I think after last season and what he was able to accomplish, you know, that that's always going to get a little bit higher and higher when you have that kind of success. So just a matter of him getting back to that, understanding that, you know, he's going to hit the ball hard enough. He doesn't have to try to do too much. You know, when you try to do too much, your swing gets a little bit long. I think that's when you see some of the ground balls come into play and um, just not being synced up, you know, in the batter's box. So hopefully he can build off of yesterday, but it is going to be different with every pitcher, you know, that you do face. But kirky has got such a unique ability to um, to control the zone and really hit anybody, you know, when he is right. So uh, we're hoping he can really keep it rolling. Yeah, John, what I think Manoa is really good with two strikes, it's occasionally, you know, obviously the shape on the slider is – important but it's occasionally me against you if i need the extra gear the extra velocity i can go to it that for me is what makes him special when he's really good why does he not have the extra gear i mean i think we've seen flashes of that really um you know we saw flashes of it even in his last outing in double a where his last pitch was 95 um i think that you know Alec is, he's funny, man. We've, we've said it for the whole time he's been up here. He almost builds as the outing goes on. He knows when to add a little bit, whether it's a four seamer at the top of the zone, or if it's going to be a sinker, he's going to try to go ball to strike with. He has that. And I think the things that he worked on delivery wise will allow him to continue to get closer to that too, in terms of how quick he's getting down the mound and what kind of finish that leads to with both, you know, both slider and fastball. Um, so those are the things that we've been looking at. I think that that extra gear will be there, um, you know, and, and it's, um, it's just a huge weapon for him when he does have that, when he does get ahead of batters. And he was, he was doing that his last outing and just, um, you know, I think, you know, didn't really hit the location of it, you know, more so than, than the actual finish of the pitches. 
John, uh, we talked about the addition of Yenesis Cabrera, um, and, you know, that's that time of year, right? We're 10 days away from the trade deadline, and a lot of teams are going to be making moves, and frankly, there's going to be a lot of talk about moves that never are made, never will be made, Mm -hmm. and maybe never even considered. That's kind of where we are right now. Uh, Mm -hmm. As as a manager, do you sort of keep a... uh, an ear open and keep a weather eye on that, you know, to make sure that it's not becoming a distraction in the clubhouse or is it just not, you know, is that just not a factor? I mean, we, we have casual conversations about it. I think, um, you know, I think we have a, a an old enough group to understand, you know, this time of year. And mm-hmm. um, I think everyone's a little bit anxious to see, you know, what is out there and how any piece could help a contending team. Um, and at the same time too, I think what we really, you know, have been, you know, diving into and expending a lot of energy on is how can we continue to drive this group that is here forward and get better? What can we do to tighten up um, our own group right now that, you know, trade deadlines tough because you think, you know, you're going to get this big ad and it's just going to be like a button you push and you make your team that much better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is the case with really, really unique talents. Uh, but at the same time, you know, with the group that we have assembled, you know, that has been here the entire year, you know, we all think that there's, you know, there's a lot of room left to to really continue to to move this group forward too. So they're they're aware of that, you know, and they're excited about that too. And again, really any team that is contending like we are, um, obviously open to um and, you know, um interested in to any pieces that could help us get better too. So that's kind of where they're at. You know, the, like I said, they, they understand it. it. It's a lot of outside noise, but they do a really good job of handling it in here. Um, you know, just kind of casually talking about it. And, um, but again, I can't overstate how excited we are about the guys that are that are here already. Uh, Dalton Varsha is a part of that group. He's six for his last 43. It's look, it's, he's trying to find his way, right? It was mechanical yep. start of the year it was hitting clean up you're trying to figure out that you're trying to figure out how to get on base we've had this conversation with you is there is there one adjustment you think that sort of could get him in a better flow just to be more competitive it ain't about production i don't think a lot of the times with him it's just when he walks to the plate be a tough out is there something that you see that maybe he could change that would make him a tougher out yeah, I mean, we've seen him be a tough guy. We've seen him do damage, and I think that's why we're so excited about him. And, you know, I think he'd be the first one to admit that, yeah, it is tough right now. Um, I think one thing that probably jumps out is just whenever a hitter is grinding a little bit, it, it comes down to the pitches that you swing at, you know. And I don't think it's anything mechanical with Dalton right now. I think it's just stepping in that box and, and looking, you know, looking to be aggressive early in counts. And if that pitch isn't there where he can handle it, moving on to the next pitch, you know, and I think you could say that about a lot of hitters, but especially with Barsh, um, you know, as long as he's swinging at the right pitch, you know, he's going to be really good. You know, you see the high fastball, you see the breaking balls down. And I think in between those are pitches that um, he may not be offering at that he, that he is really good on. So I think part of that is when you are going up and down a little bit, um, you know, that can get compromised at times. Um, So I just want, I want to see him be aggressive um, on pitches that he, that he can handle because I've said it the whole year. There's, there's so many ways this dude helps us win, yep. you know, you know, in the box, in the box on the bases in the field. So um, not putting too much pressure on himself and just really being selective on pitches that he can hammer. John, we can't let you go without congratulating you and picking up Absolutely. your, your hundredth win yesterday. Your, uh, you and Cito Gaston both did it in the same, same number of games. Uh, I know, obviously, you had to jump in a plane. You're getting ready to, yeah. to take on the Mariners. But any any sort of reflections on what 100, 100 wins as a, as a major league manager wins means awesome. to you? Uh, it's really – thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, it's, it's cool. You know, it means that you have really good players, uh, for one. And it means that, you know, you're, you know, relatively consistent with what you're doing, which is what I take a lot of pride in. But – to kind of be mentioned in, you know, the same sentence as Cito, who is a legend, not just in the Blue Jays organization, but around the game of baseball is um, humbling and unique and, and special. Um, and I, I wasn't even really aware of it until it happened. Um, but I think it's, I think it's really cool. It means that, you know, like I said, players are the ones out there competing and the ones getting it done. So thankful that I've been around the group for a long time and, uh, that I can accomplish it with them and the staff that is here as well. But uh, hopefully there's uh, 
a few hundred more coming. I was going to say, let's get it started with 101 tonight. John, yeah, thanks awesome. very much for doing this, man. Uh, go get him and uh, travel safely. Good luck, buddy. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it as always. Yeah.